In 2018, the collapse of the Sapien Seinam Noi hydropower dam in Laos unleashed billions of tons of water, leaving 13,000 people trapped and over 6,000 displaced, causing significant social and economic damage to Laos. After the rescue efforts were completed, people began to review the causes of the incident and found that the Korean company contracted for the project had engaged in numerous violations during construction, which led to the tragic event. People inevitably have some doubts. Laos's neighbor, China, is renowned for its expertise in dam construction. For example, the Three Gorges Dam is the largest hydropower station in the world, and China has always been willing to undertake overseas infrastructure projects. So why did Laos choose a South Korean construction company for its dam? Some people are also curious about China's attitude towards the dam breach incident in Laos after the country rejected Chinese proposals in the bidding process and chose South Korea instead. Okay, in today's video, let's figure these things out, let's get started. Laos, originally a country primarily reliant on traditional agriculture and forestry, had a weak industrial foundation. In order to boost its economy, the Laotian government turned its attention to new energy sources. Laos possesses abundant hydroelectric resources due to the presence of several rivers, including the Mekong River, flowing through its mountainous terrain. The significant water gradient within Laos harbors astonishing hydroelectric potential, especially after witnessing the success and significant role of China's Three Gorges Dam, Laos became even more determined to construct its own world-class hydropower station as a vital means of revitalizing its economy. In 2011, Laos finally made the decision to leverage its water resources to drive economic development and plan to construct a top-tier hydropower station through international cooperation. Once Laos released the bidding announcement, it immediately drew high attention from water development companies worldwide, with enterprises from various countries such as China, Germany, Japan, and South Korea submitting their bidding applications to Laos. China is at the forefront of water development globally, and its close proximity to Laos, coupled with their previous successful cooperation in hydropower station construction, made it almost certain that China's Three Gorges Group, responsible for the Three Gorges project, would be selected as the contractor for this project. However, the final outcome surprised everyone as Laos ultimately chose a consortium led by SK Engineering and Construction, a South Korean company. So, how did the Korean company win the bid? It turns out that the Korean consortium's bid was the lowest among all the applicants at $1.13 billion. Additionally, they promised to complete the construction of the hydropower station in the shortest time possible and stated that Laos would generate annual revenues of up to $33 billion once the project was completed. Taking into account factors such as time and cost, Laos believed that the Korean bid best suited their needs. According to the contract, the construction of the project was scheduled to begin in 2013 and officially completed and operational by 2018. So, how did the Korean company manage to provide the lowest bid? After all, the cost and duration of such a project are not easily determined. Although $1.13 billion may seem like a substantial amount, it is remarkably low for a project of this nature. Could it be that South Korea was willing to bear the cost of the project? It turns out that after being selected as the final bidder, the Korean company included a clause in the contract, they would have the operating rights to the dam for several decades. Taking into account Laos' urgent need for the hydropower station and various economic factors, Laos ultimately agreed to this provision. After five years of construction, the Sapien Seinam Noi hydropower dam was nearing completion, and the Laotian government was eagerly anticipating its operation. However, in July 2018, Laos was struck by a severe tropical storm. The Laotian authorities didn't pay much attention to the approaching storm since they frequently experienced storms during the summer, and relevant factors were considered in the construction process. No one anticipated any issues with the Sapien Seinam Noi Dam. However, on July 24, the auxiliary dam D of the Sapien Seinam Noi Hydropower Dam collapsed under the tremendous force. Floodwaters swept through villages with unstoppable power, plunging the residents into despair and terror. The severity of this flood shocked the world. Prime Minister Tong Lun Sisolith, who was attending a government meeting, immediately suspended the meeting upon hearing the news and personally led rescue operations at the site. 
However, the Korean company attributed the accident to weather conditions and inadequate local civil defense. Even the rescue efforts were slow to arrive. It took a week after the incident for the Korean rescue team to reach the scene. Once the rescue operations were underway, on August 8, Laos issued a prime ministerial decree to establish an investigative team headed by then Vice Prime Minister Baung Thong Chitmani to conduct a detailed investigation into the entire incident. During the investigation, it was discovered that the dam did not collapse suddenly without any warning signs. Several days prior to the incident, local residents had noticed depressions in the dam and reported them to the relevant authorities. However, the Korean company showed no concern about this situation and merely attributed it to excessive rainfall during the local summer, missing the best opportunity to address the issue. Under normal circumstances, when cracks appear in a dam, there are remedies available. For example, lowering the water level in the reservoir could prevent serious consequences, or at the very least, prevent the worst-case scenario of a breach. However, the Korean company chose to ignore the situation. Even when the water level had exceeded the warning line, they took no action, nor did they issue any warnings to the local government and residents. On the day before the incident, when residents reported that the cracks were expanding, Korea finally dispatched personnel to inspect the dam, but it was already too late. Only then did Korea inform the local government to urgently evacuate the residents, but the evacuation was not completed before the dam's defenses were completely breached the following morning, resulting in irreparable and severe consequences. In the subsequent investigation, Laos discovered more issues during the construction of the hydropower station. The investigation revealed that the South Korean construction company had engaged in serious cut corners and inferior materials in the construction of the project. They not only reduced the thickness of the drainage cushion by half, but also completely omitted the water stop groove and grouting curtain. The omission of the water stop groove in the construction of a hydropower station in Laos is a grave matter. Regardless of the crucial role played by the water stop groove itself, it is well known that Laos is a country prone to heavy rainfall. Without the water stop groove, it means losing the most reliable measure against heavy rain. Furthermore, the height of the dam was also more than 6 meters lower than the specified parameters in the contract. Upon further sampling of the dam, it was discovered that the soil used in the dam construction contained a large amount of sand particles and plant roots, which completely failed to meet the basic requirements for dam construction. All these shortcuts and substandard practices resulted in poor water seepage performance of the dam and a fragile ability to withstand pressure. According to the contract, the dam was supposed to be completed and handed over by 2018. In order to meet the deadline, South Korea repeatedly accelerated the construction progress, but at the expense of severely compromised construction quality. During the rainy season when it was necessary to suspend construction to ensure safety, South Korea still took the risk and continued the construction, becoming another significant factor in the occurrence of this accident. For the South Korean construction company, such cut corners and inferior practices undoubtedly helped reduce construction costs and maximize profits. However, the cost was a significant reduction in the safety of the dam and the sacrifice of the immediate interests of the local people in Laos. Initially, the South Korean company insisted that the accident originated from the lack of awareness of local residents. However, the Laotian government presented quality inspection reports issued by professional institutions, confirming the serious problems with the South Korean construction company in the project. The response from South Korea after the incident triggered international criticism, and even within South Korea, there was a great deal of questioning, believing that the company's actions had brought disgrace to the country. In stark contrast to South Korea's attempt to shift responsibility, China, which had been rejected in the bidding process, actively extended a helping hand to Laos when it faced the flood threat caused by the dam breach. After the Chinese embassy in Laos promptly reported the news back to China, the PLA dispatched a medical team, which arrived at the scene on July 25. They provided timely treatment for the affected population and implemented preventive measures against potential epidemics after the flood. Accompanying the medical team were rescue teams from China Gizhuba Group Corporation CGGC, that drove over 100 kilometers to reach the site, bringing supplies with them. Upon arrival in Laos, the Chinese rescue team quickly repaired the damaged bridges and restored local transportation facilities. Accompanied by water conservancy construction experts, they held emergency meetings with Laotian technical personnel to discuss dam repairs and put forward professional opinions. 
At the site, the Laotian people repeatedly gave thumbs up to the Chinese rescue team and expressed their gratitude by saying, China, very good, to acknowledge the selfless rescue efforts of the Chinese people. After the disaster, the repair of the dam became a difficult but crucial task. SK Engineering and Construction Company, Limited, the owner of the project, had to issue a global tender for the dam's repair. This time, China, as widely expected, became the winning bidder for the dam repair construction and demonstrated its expertise during the repair process, earning unanimous recognition from its counterparts. In 2019, the dam repair project undertaken by China was successfully completed and passed the engineering acceptance with high standards. The Prime Minister of Laos personally awarded the National Development Medal of Laos to China Gizhuba Group Corporation. With the generous assistance of the Chinese people, this crisis was finally resolved. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.